gracious Heavenly Father, most high, we come before your throne of grace and mercy in the name of Yahusha. Father Yah, we come before you lifting up praise and honor to your blessed name. We adore you, Abba Yah, and let our adoration give you the praise and the honor that is due you. Let your people that are called by your name give you honor, give you the praise that you so deserve. Abba Yah, your provision, your provision is sufficient. Let us not be like our brothers and sisters that mumble and grumble in the wilderness. Let us show you gratitude. Let us show you our love. Let us show you your appreciation of the young. While we have breath in our bodies, let your people begin to put respect on your name that is blessed, that is sovereign, that is wondrous, that is majestic. We are so grateful, Abba Yah, even for the little that you do. Everything that you do for us. From waking us up in the morning with your breath of life, with your name breathing in and out of us. With food on our tables. With health and strength. Whether we're going through trials, tribulations, let us always remember that you are here for your righteous people that you would never leave us nor forsake us. Oh, um, let our souls and all that is in us praise you and give you the glory, give you the honor. So that more and more and more and more of your people can draw near to you. Because you want more. You could have let us go a long time ago, but you still given us that grace. And we are so gracious to you. We are so in all you and all that you have done for us. And we give you the praise. We give you the glory. Thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Let everything that has breath give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Shabbat Shalom to the Mizpachah, to the family of Yah. Welcome to Daughter of Yah Teaching Ministry. We're so happy to have you here today. Um, just got to get myself together from that beautiful, um, beautiful prayer. And Sister Prina gave, she always has these anointed prayers. And um, we just thank you um, for joining us on uh, this beautiful set of our day of our father yeah and um you guys are in for a treat today um today's uh we're gonna just take uh we are still continuing um uh with our uh series um the final reminder series we are still continuing with that we're not done with that um but today um we're gonna take a pause from that uh, to uh, bring forth a message. Um, I heard from the Father Yah um, this week and uh, the message that I have to bring forth, I pray that it will um, encourage the body, that it will uh, give anyone who's feeling hopeless, that it will give you hope. Um, this message that he has uh, given to me that the Ruach poured into me um, because we weren't here on last Shabbat I was literally to be honest I just was tired and um, you know after you keep giving 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 keep pouring I had nothing else to give I had to allow the Ruach to pour back into me because if the Ruach is not pouring back into me then I cannot pour into you. And so I felt like I was going and going and I just was telling Sister Prina, I just can't do it. <laughs> I don't. Um, and the only reason why I'm here before you on this Shabbat is because of the message that the Father yeah, gave to me um, to bring forth to you all. And so that is why we're here today. And um, we will continue um with the final hour series, but today I have this message from the Father Yah um, that is so important. This message is so beautiful. Um, what the the Father Yah told me, and what the Ruach poured into me, and there's going to be an understanding of His name um, that was revealed in Scripture that is going to knock your socks off, okay? Um, so today's uh, message is not a teaching, so to speak, but it is um, an eye-opening message and from directly from the Father. And um, so welcome to everyone. We have so many new subscribers. I hate to call them subscribers. Those of you who are new to our family who... Yah has led you to our teaching channel. Welcome, welcome. We greet you in the name of Yah, the Father, who is head over all, and our Master, Yahushua HaMashiach, who um, is the only begotten Son of the Father. And so I want to go ahead and get started. So what um, started this message that I'm bringing forth is uh, something that occurred um, on a, this week. And so I'm going to go ahead and start reading from my journal because anytime the Father Yah is speaking to me or I'm having dreams or visions, I always um, write down everything because sometimes he doesn't always give you uh, everything all in one dream or one vision. Sometimes it's pieces and then you're able to put them together. And so on the um, very early morning, uh, very early Thursday morning um, of May 23rd, 2024, which was two days ago, um, I was coming out of my sleep at around 5.59 a.m. And as I was awakening, it's kind of like when you have your eyes are opening and as I was awakening out of my sleep, I heard in a male voice, I heard the father say, the Lord thy God will nurture thee. And this is exactly 
we don't, I know the, the name of the father, but I'm telling you what I heard. And it was so crystal clear. It reminded me of when I cried out to the father 20 years ago to know him. And I asked him to reveal himself to me. And he told me, you must keep my Sabbath. And, and this reminds me of that. And as I was awakening, I heard him say, the Lord thy God will nurture thee to bring thee too, and I could not remember what it was that he was, I couldn't remember the end of the saying and the remaining words of what the father Yah said, I could not remember, although I tried with all my might. Um, but what stood out to me was a fact that the father Yah said that he was nurturing me. That's what stood out that he told me, I am going, I will nurture you. And the ending, it was to bring me to, and I'm just paraphrasing. And the reason why I didn't put the end of it, because he said, I will nurture the Lord, thy God will nurture thee to bring thee to. So he was nurturing me and telling me he was going to nurture me, but it was for a purpose. And I couldn't remember the end of the dream and the end of, not the dream, the end of what was said until later on of this message, you will find out. And, but I knew in my heart and in my mind, I knew that, the fact that him telling me he was nurturing me was to bring me to some type of wholeness, to bring me to completion, to, to learn or to know something or to help me to be a certain way or to lead me to a certain place or to a certain growth. It was something along that line. And I didn't write the exact ending, like word for word, I only had on the screen what I know he told me and what I remember, but I know the ending of what he said, the Lord thy God will nurture thee to bring thee. And in my heart, in my mind, I know it was something along the line of him bringing me to some type of wholeness, some completion to learn something, to help me to be a certain way, to lead me to a certain place or to grow me. It was something along that line. But nonetheless, you know, I, I sat up and when I awakened and when I, when I, when I sat on my bed and I awakened and, and I just was pondering on what he was saying and I immediately looked at the clock right after I heard the father I say this, I immediately looked at the clock because I had awakened around 5 a.m. that morning to use the bathroom and in my and in my heart I'm saying to myself I'm going to lay back down for a moment then I'm going to get up at 6 a.m. to you know to spend time with y'all in the secret place to praise and you know to pray and to read scripture this is what I'm saying in my heart and so when I realized that um y'all had given me that message one minute prior to the time, because it was 5.59 when I looked at the clock right after I heard him say that. And so when I realized that Yah had given me that message, one minute prior, 5.59, one minute prior to the time that I had said in my heart that I was going to get up and spend time in his presence, that's when I knew that it was an appointed time and it was an appointed message, okay? And the way that the Father Yah said it, the Lord thy God, will nurture thee to bring thee. The way he said it, it was like, it was a scripture. So I said this, I, in my mind, I'm saying, I know that this is a scripture. So I got up immediately and I began to try to find it. And I kept typing in on Google, the Lord thy God will nurture thee to bring thee. I was trying all kinds of combinations and I could not find I could not find it at all. There was nothing that was exactly the way that he said it. And that's how I knew that at that moment, I realized that 
this message was for me. And um, and it was at that moment that I began to um have joy. Um, you know, I began to to have have joy in my heart. Um, because the father Yah told me that he was gonna nurture me. And it was at that moment that I felt so much peace. And I felt so much joy and I felt so much love and I was excited to see what it is that the Father Yah is going to do next because if he said it, he's going to do it. And so two words that have been resonating with me for the past two weeks are grace and peace. Those two words have just been resonating over and over and over uh, with me in my quiet time, outside of my quiet time is grace and peace, okay? And so I thought that this was a scripture. Again, I realized that this was not, you know, a, this was not a scripture at all. And so that is what the Father Yah told me. I will, the Lord thy God will nurture thee. Please, I don't want anybody, please come in. Oh, he said God, please, if that's what you're going to do, just go find another channel because you have to sometimes learn to have the spirit the father yah um and i don't use that name but he will do what he will do so we're going to do a study on nurture um and that's what the ruach i'm telling you what you guys are going to see is going to knock your socks off. What the Father Yah has poured into me and how he cultivated, and I'm saying he because I did not, how he cultivated this lesson, how the rock led me, how he brought things to my attention that I was not looking for, just to make sure that I came into um that this came into my path for me to see, for me to read, for me to study. He kept dropping nuggets. And so let's, we're going to do a, a word study on nurture. And that's where the rock led me next. Um, so I began it and I, I got up right after I heard the Lord that God will nurture thee. I got up, I was doing Googling, couldn't find it. And then I just was led to study nurture. And I spent three hours with the father from three to nine, studying, continuing to have the rock pour into me. And then I got up and began putting this message together. Okay. And so when you think of nurture, the first thing that came to my mind is a mother nurturing her infant, her child, uh, providing that uh, infant with uh, all that he or she needs. Uh, the 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 mother, you know, making sure that the baby is fed and changed, and you know, cared for and loved and held, and and then I also think uh, I thought of you know cultivating you know, plants, a, a garden and watering the garden, making sure that they have the sunlight. All of these types of things um, came to mind when I thought of nurturing and also thought of a father who may nurture his son by comforting him. Maybe he fell off his bike and he's there to comfort him with, you know, kind, soothing words. These were uh some of the things that uh, came to my mind is uh, I think about nurturing and then some of you that, you know, this may resonate with you um, when you think about nurturing, you know, when you, if you had a nurturing parent, you know, who uh, care for you. And so again, I told you that I could not find um, the word nurture. Um, I, I could not find it. As, um, I couldn't, I did not find what the father Yah when I Googled it. Okay. However, I said, I'm going to look this up in the ancient Hebrew lexicon of the Bible. And I could not find the word nurture <laughs> in the ancient Hebrew lexicon of the Bible. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> it's not here. And so, um, 
But I do know, and we, I think we all have an understanding that nurture, the word nurture in itself contributes to the development of an individual, okay? However you nurture in different ways, it is for the development of that individual, okay? And so when I uh, looked up some synonyms to present to you uh, for this teaching for nurture, um, and, and this was also some, some words that I found, um, in strong Hebrews as well, but nurturing itself, it means to cultivate, to foster, to cherish, to nurse, to feed, to maintain, to develop, to care for, to provide, and to sustain. These were, uh, many of the synonyms that have the same meaning um, of nurture and what it means to nurture. And so we will go into one of the words that stood out to me and, and had my Ruach uh, quicken, uh, which was nourish, as I, you know, observe this list of synonyms. Okay, so nurture. In the Hebrew, spelled from right to left is lamed, tet, pay, and het. Some say chet, but it's het, okay? And so this is how you spell it, um, from right to left, okay? And you see the uh, pictographs on um, the screen going from right to left, okay? So it is, again, nurture from right to left is spelled lamed, tet, pay, and het okay and so let's go through some of these letters to get a picture of what nurturing may mean so lamed the lamed is a picture of the shepherd's staff it's a 12th uh letter of the hebrew alphabet um it means to teach it means to uh guide it means to learn um it means to direct and the tet its pictograph is a picture of a uh, of a basket. Either it could be made of clay or wicker. When I thought about clay, um, you know, the Father Yah is the potter with the clay. He shapes, he molds. And so when you think about nurturing a person, it's for their development. And if you have clay, you are the one uh, that, uh, the owner of that clay is the one who is in control or has the authority to shape it and to mold it the way that he or she wants. And so the Hebrew letter Tet is a the pictograph. It's a picture of a basket of clay or wicker. It's the ninth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It means to store uh, because in baskets, it's like a, it also means container. So you store things in a container. You're able to hold things. Um, it also represents good or best. Uh, something that's good that is hidden or inverted good, a hidden or inverted good, things that are hidden or inverted, like pearls are hidden in the deep of the ocean and they're hidden. And you think about where diamonds are hidden deep in the earth. So those things that are precious, those things that are to be cherished and are valuable, they're hidden, okay? As we are hidden in the Father and the Father is hidden in us, okay? Um. But yeah, so it also, um, so it's a nine Hebrew letter where things are contained. So, you know, it also represents the nine months of pregnancy. Okay, it's the ninth Hebrew letter, the alphabet. We know that a woman contains or stores or holds <laughs> the embryo, the fetus, and allows it to grow and to develop as we think about nurturing. Okay, so when the woman is pregnant, she's nurturing um, that child. Um, even before he comes out with the foods that she eats and what she drinks and her, you know, keeping her stress levels down and, you know, taking her, you know, uh, her, what do you call them, uh, the prenatal uh, pills and all of those different types of things, okay? And so this also um, represents an area uh, where transformation takes place, Okay. Um, in the womb, transformation and change and growth is taking place and it's also hidden. So the good thing, that hidden thing 
is hidden within the womb until it is ready to be brought forth, right? And so, um, and it teaches us also to distinguish between good and evil, okay? The uh, third letter in the word nurture is pay. Um, it is, the pictograph is the picture of a, a mouth. Um, it's the 17th Hebrew letter of the alphabet. It is, um, it means mouth or uh, speak or to sport speech. Um, it means the edge of the mouth. Um, it means breath, which is ruach, spirit, or revelation. Okay. Um, spoken word or the spoken testimony. Okay. And then the final um, letter in the word nurture is the Hebrew letter het. It is a picture, a picture of a tent wall or fence. It is the eighth Hebrew letter. It means wall, fence, uh, protection or to protect uh, grace. It represents grace. Grace, uh, the fifth Hebrew letter uh, represents grace. And grace is like this space of time, this space of protected space um, that is allowed. Um, like he gives you grace, that time to repent. Um, it represents a new beginning, uh, salvation, life. It also represents the resurrection um, and when you also think about a fence, it's like a hedge, okay? So the, a hedge of protection is to, to protect those that are in the house from those who are outside of the house or predators, you know, that may want to enter in, okay? So these are, when you think about all of these things, these this does to represent nurture. I see nurturing in all of this. We're nurturing with the Lamed, the shepherd. You know, Yahusha is the good shepherd. He teaches, he guides the sheep, he directs the sheep. And then I thought about the Lamed, it's the 12th letter. And I thought about the 12 tribes of Yashorel. <laughs> that came to mind, the Tet, which is a container for a, a basket that that which is good is held and you were able to shape and mold. And I thought about the nine months of pregnancy and you know that 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 came to came to mind when I, when I thought about that and um the nine fruits of the spirit okay and then the hebrew letter pay um you know is the mouth the open mouth where the you breathe in the breath you inhale and exhale is when the spoken word uh is is is, is uttered and you think about those things you can nurture and you can build up uh, with the breath, okay? And and what you speak, okay? Because we know that we can, it tells us that life and death are in the power of the tongue, tongue. So we're able to build up, okay? Or you can tear down. And so if we're nurturing, we're building up, you know, with the words that, um, the words that we uh, uh, speak. We know that, uh Yah speaks to us through his word and uh, through the voice of his Ruach. And so that's how we are nurtured oftentimes through his Ruach. The Ruach is the comforter, okay, right? And so we're comforted with his word. And so these are just some of the things. And then when we think about the Hebrew letter, Het, you know, uh, you, you nurture when you're protecting someone, you're nurturing them. You're covering them. Um, when you think about salvation and life, and that's nurturing a person. When Yahusha came, the Father Yah revealed to me that he came, he was born in a manger. He was born in a manger because a manger is where domestic animals get their food. And he nurtured us. And the Father Yah told me, I know, told me, that he came for the sole purpose because domestic animals are born for the sole purpose of 
being killed to nourish people. And the father yesterday, he was born for the sole purpose. He came for the sole purpose of dying for us so that he could nourish us. That's nurture. And when we're being covered, that's the father Yah nurturing us. So I wanted to just break that down for you. And so the first two letters of nurture we just learned is um, Lamed Tet, okay? Okay, because we know from right to left, nurture is spelled Lamed Tet Pe Het. The first two letters I have it highlighted in uh, in uh, yellow so that you can um, see it, lit, <laughs> fluorescent. And I would, when I looked this up in the ancient Hebrew lexicon in the Bible, the first two letters, as you see, Lamed and Tet. And so I'm going to cut my here. So Lamed and Tet is this. So this is the Lamed from right to left, uh, from right to left, Lamed Tet. This is the Lamed, the shepherd's staff, and this is the Tet. Um, the picture wrap is a, a basket. And it means to cover the action. The action word of this means to cover. So that's the action. It means to cover. The concrete word means to veil. Okay, to veil. And the abstract is secret. Okay, so I wanted to just, you know, share that with you. But so let's read it. So... The pictograph Lamed is a picture of the shepherd's staff representing authority. The, uh, the tet is a picture of a basket or a container. Combine these mean authority contained. Authority contained. The covering that covers and hides the face of a woman. And it says a covering that hides what is behind. And so we know in the tabernacle, the veil is symbolic of our master, Yahushua. Okay. And the veil was the door, the entrance that hid us, that hid man from Yah, where his very presence was in that tabernacle, which was the Holy of Holies. This was a secret place. Okay. And so the first two letters of nurture is Lamed Tet, and it means to cover and to veil, and it means secret. Okay, and so the ancient Hebrew lexicon of the Bible, 1242 um, JV, it means complete. And so I told you that one of the words that stood out that my spirit was quick in nature means to nourish. To nourish, according to the ancient Hebrew lexicon in the Bible, means complete. It means vessel. Okay? It means whole. So the action word of to nourish means to complete. And I now know this is what the Father Yah was telling me. Because I, I was telling you when I was telling you um, what I heard and what I believe. But I did not know the exact. Like, I didn't know the exact, I don't, I'm not going to come here and say, he said this exactly when I could not remember it. I was being totally transparent, but I told you in my own words, I knew that what he was nurturing me for, it was to bring me to something, some type of completion, some type of wholeness. And I thought this before I even did this study. Okay. So I'm going in sequential of everything that was downloaded. So this came after the fact. When when the Ruach led me to this, because I told you when I was looking up the synonyms because I could not find nurture in the ancient Hebrew lexicon of the Bible. When I looked up synonyms, nourish is when the Ruach quickened my spirit. And that's when I looked up nourish. And when I looked up nourish, I saw what I had already felt in my heart that the Father Yah was saying that he was going to nurture me to bring me to completion, to bring me to wholeness, to be a vessel, okay? And so the pictograph cough, and it's spelled cough lamed. The pictograph cough 
is a picture of the bent palm representing the bending or subduing of the wheel. The lamed is a picture of a shepherd's staff or a yoke. Combine these mean tame the yoke. An animal or land that is tamed has been worked and is complete and ready for use. Taming include construction of holding pens, putting the soil to the plow, harvesting of crops, milk, milk or meat. One, one eats once the harvest is complete. So to complete, vessel, hold, a container, see this? A container, that's the tech, a container for holding content, something that is full or whole. And so he wants us to be complete when he says to be ye perfect. When people say, well, no one could be perfect. Why are we as believers spreading a lie of the enemy? When the father, yes, said, be ye holy for I, Yah, your father am holy. Be ye perfect for I, Yah, your father am perfect. He said that Job was a perfect man. He feared Yah and he walked before him upright. Abraham was perfect. There are people who in the, in the scriptures were perfect. That does not mean without mistake. Do you not think that Abraham did not ever make a mistake, that Job did not ever make a mistake? But he said that Job was perfect. What made Job perfect was that he feared Yah and he turned away from evil, okay? And so perfect, again, does not mean without sin. It means that you are whole, that you are complete. And we have been called to walk upright. We are striving for perfection, striving to be complete, to be whole in the Father, Yah, and in Yahushua. It also means to sustain. Nourish means to sustain. So it means to complete and it means to sustain. When Yahushua was done, when he finished his perfect work on the tree, he said, it is finished. He completed the work. He did, he completed the work. And it means to sustain, okay? It means food, to sustain. If anyone does not know, I've been going through a trial for two years. And he, he told me two days ago, I will nurture you. I will complete you. I will make you whole. I will sustain you. I will give you your food. And however that may be, that may be through people whom the Father Yah moves on their heart. But at the end of the day, it's still him sustaining me because he provides for that person to be able to have, to be able to provide for me. Okay. And so to sustain means to provide what is needed to make someone or something whole or complete, okay? To provide what is needed to make someone or something whole or complete. It means to contain, to feed, to sustain, to abide, to nourish, to hold, to receive to bear. You see all of these things? And then it also means span, okay? Remember, nur nurture is spelled Lamed, and then the remaining three letters you see on the screen, the Tet, the Pay, and the Het. Only thing that is missing, because <laughs> I told you I could not find... The only thing that is missing is the Lamed, okay? And so the remaining three letters of nurture means to span. It says the span of the fingers as spread out and used as a measure to spread out the fingers of the hand. And it means to rear, to rear, to bring up and to train children, to swaddle. Okay, so sometimes you might spread the hand if you have to nur it, nur and no one is thinking about spanking and disciplining sometimes as nurturing them and nourishing them, rearing them, 
Okay, that's why they call it your rear end. If they take the hand and spread the fingers and then pat you on your rear end to rear you, to bring up, to train up, to instruct. It's not always using your hand, but it's using your words in love to instruct and compassion to teach, okay? All right, we know that Yahusha is the word and we know that his word nourishes us. The father y'all told me he was sent, okay? For the sole purpose of nourishing us, okay? And I remember weeping so hard. I remember crying so hard because that's I, that is the reason why he was born in a manger. A manger. He didn't even have a place to put his head. A manger is the place where domestic animals go and get their food. He was laying in that manger because he was our food. He was going to die for us so that we could be nourished, so that we could be instructed, so that we could be directed, so that we can be corrected, so that we can be taught and guided. We don't realize the fullness of what Yahushua did for us. We don't realize the love that the Father Yah has for us. But again, uh, nourish, uh, nurture means to nourish. Okay, and again, it is spelled Lamed, Tet, He, and Het. Yahushua is the word who nourished us. Now, something that is standing out that I have highlighted in yellow is pay. And what I'm going to present to you, I presented before, and some of you might remember, and some of you are new to this channel, you're not. So I'm going to, this was just, I, when the rock brought this back to my attention, I'm like, okay, yes, I'm going to add this back in here, okay? And so pay, in the Hebrew, even the letters have spellings to them. It's not, there's nothing like it. It opens up so much more understanding to our father and his word. Um, and I'm self-taught, just continuing to still teach myself. But pay is spelled pay, hey. Okay, it's spelled pay, hey. And pay is the picture of the mouth. And hey, it's the picture of the man with his arms raised. Okay. So what the rocket revealed to me, and I'm going to bring this forth, and this was, I presented this before. When you think about the Hebrew letter, hey, okay, the open mouth, okay, the, the spoken word that is stored within us, okay, the spoken word that is stored within us, stored in our heart, stored in our mind. It is breathed out of our mouth and it goes up. Okay, I want you to get this. The pay is the mouth, the spoken word, the breath that is in us, that is stored in us, that word that is in us, that's in our heart, that's in our mind. It is breathed out breathe or spoken out of our mouth and it goes up that which is stored in us is spoken out is breathed out it goes up and it goes out the spoken word is stored and then when we need it if we have the word in us we if we're able to draw upon it like a treasure something that you have stored up that you're able to go to in a time of need when I need certain things, I can draw from the Ruach that is in me that will quicken scripture to my mind for me to draw if I need to witness or share a testimony, Yahushua, it's in me. And I'm able to draw from that which is in me and I'm able to speak it and it's able to, and I'm able to breathe it out, speak it out. And then it goes forth out, up, pay. But when we speak about the Hebrew letter, hey, Okay, the spoken word is breathed. Okay, the breath, the spoken word or the breath, that revelation, it enters in and it goes down into our heart, into our mind. The spoken word is downloaded. Did you get that? 
with that. If someone is speaking, like you're listening to me right now, you're listening to the spoken word, you're listening to the breath, you're listening to me reveal things to you, you're listening, it's entering in, it's going down into your heart, into your mind, it's being downloaded. So this is the difference with the pay because it's stored within you. It's within your heart. It's within your mind. The breath is in you. The word is in you. It's stored in you. And then you can draw upon that word that is in you, that word that is in you. And then it is breathed out. It is spoken out. However, when the Ruach, okay, is downloading, or if a brother or sister is speaking wisdom, or they're speaking a word, or they're bringing a revelation, then it enters into your heart and mind, and it's downloaded. This is very important for us to understand, and I'm going to tell you why in a moment. Let's go to some preach-ups, and I'm going to put this, what we just learned up on the screen, so that we can have this to draw from. So when you see these precepts, you, it's going to, a light bulb should click on. Luke chapter 6, verse 45 says the following. A good man out of the treasure of his heart brings forth evil. And an evil man out of the evil treasures, that which is evil in his heart, that's what is stored in his heart, brings forth evil. He says, for out of the abundance, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. This is pain. This is pay. Whatever is stored, when you look, look to the upper right-hand corner, look at pay. Whatever is stored, because a treasure is where you store things, okay? If you're a good man, out of the good treasure of your heart, and you're going to speak forth, and it's going to bring forth what's going to go forth from what's in you, what you have to draw from you, it's going to be good, okay? But if you're an evil man, out of the evil treasure, you're you're bringing things, yes, that's coming forth and it's coming out, but it's evil. So it's only what's in you. Why? He says, for out of the abundance of the heart, whatever is in the heart, the mouth speak. So when you hear people speaking, listen to how they talk. Listen to the things they say. Did they, you always use raunchy, they're telling dirty jokes, raunchy things. There's sometimes I hear some of these um, Yashra lights, Hebrews speaking and they're teaching and they're cursing and using profanity, even though he said bitter and sweet water don't flow out the same faucet. I'm hearing some of these Israelites, every other word, they're talking about sex all the time and penises all the time and all of these kind. Of, I'm listening to this all the time. This is that tells me what's on your heart. This is all you're talking about. What's coming out of your mouth? Are you speaking profanity all the time? What's your conversation like? Whatever is in you, Luke 6 and 45, the Messiah is saying, out of the abundance of your heart, the overflow of your heart, whatever is in your heart is going to come out because that's what's stored. Because that's what's stored. Because the treasure is a container. Okay? Proverbs 4 and 23 says to guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Guard your heart heart protect your heart do not allow anything to just enter in do you look at hey don't don't we don't always like when people always someone comes i'm prophesying of you i'm not getting ready to receive just what anybody says guard your heart guard your ears guard your eyes what are you what are you watching? What are you taking in? What are you allowing to be downloaded? This goes for your children. What are you allowing them to watch? What music are you listening to? What music are you allowing them to listen to? What's being downloaded in your heart, in your mind? Are you listening to scripture? Are you, are you listening? Are you, do you have people in your life who are downloading the word of Yah that, that have wisdom that can speak Yali conversations to you? What's being downloaded? We have to be so careful of how we live our lives, how we speak, and the things that we do around our children because it is being downloaded. 
And then when it's downloaded, then when you look at pay, it's something that is stored. And then when, then when you hear your children speak, what they hear, what they see, what they experience, that's only a product of what is around them. This is, this is the truth that sometimes we might not want to hear. But what they're being exposed to, it could be at home, it could be at school, it could be relatives, it could be friends. What type of people are you around or your children around? Because what is coming out of their mouth, what is what they're saying, what they're breathing for is something that has been stored. And it's been only something can only be stored when it's been put there. When it's been downloaded into that heart or that mind of that child. So this is the reason why we're told in Proverbs 4 and 23 to guard your heart with all diligence for out of it, out of your heart flows the issues of life. You can tell the life that a person is living, how they live their life, what's going on in their life by the things that they speak, the things that they do, because it says the issues of life flow out of it. Okay. It flows out of it. And so that's the reason why we have to watch the things we say. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. You can build up and edify with your mouth or you can tear down. This is something that many in this Yashara light walk need to learn. They don't know how to uh, speak the word with seasoning, to speak the word in, in love. We've been caught in the scriptures to speak the word of Yah seasoned with grace. Grace is that space of time because we act like we've been knowing the truth or knowing who we are or knowing the name all our life. When we are, we have learned the lies of our forefathers and our oppressors. And many of you just learned you was Israel yesterday and then boom, tomorrow, you're going to be out there with a mitra on your head telling everybody that's not Yashorel that they're going to hell. We have been called to guard our heart and we have to make sure that we are aware of what we are downloading what we're taking in and you as someone who's saying that you're learned in this word or a teacher of the word like he says in roman don't make the father yah's name blaspheme before the heathen make sure that you know what's coming out of your mouth that you and what you're downloading into people especially that are new in this walk so that they don't turn away and have a misunderstanding of who Yah really is because then he's going to hold you accountable because he says, if you cause at least one of these children from coming unto me, it'd be better if you had a millstone hung around your neck and that you were drowned in the sea. Okay. And so we are told to guard our hearts with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. And I, what what the rule I brought to my remembrance was the woman who touched the hem of Yahusha's garments. Life flowed out of him. And he said, who touched my garment? Because he he felt life leave out of him. He is the way, he is life. Yahusha is life. And when that woman with the issues of blood, when she touched his hem of his garden, she was healed. Life went from, forth from him. And he said, who touched me? Because he felt life leave him. Okay, he is life. And so that what is in you is what's going to flow out. Do you understand? What's in you is what's going to flow out. And so when you guard your heart, you're protecting it because you don't want anything to be downloaded and stored. And then now whatever comes out of your heart is a result or impact of what you have allowed to enter in. John 10, and I'm sorry, John 20 and uh, John 20, verse 22, I was reminded of what occurred after Yahushua's resurrection, okay? After his resurrection, uh, it says that he met with his disciples and it says in John 20, verse 22, he says, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. He told them to receive it. He breathed on them. Hey, 
Okay, the spoken word or the breath. When you look in the upper right-hand corner, look at, hey, the spoken word or the breath or the revelation that enters in, it goes down, okay? When he had breathed, when Yahushua breathed on them, okay? When he breathed on them, the Ruach, he breathed his breath on them. And they and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. They received the Ruach HaKadosh. They received the Spirit. It entered in. It entered in. You see that? It entered in. And so again, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Remember, the good man, out of his good treasure, whatever that means, whatever is stored within you, that's what will be brought forth, okay? And if good is in you, then good will be brought forth. If evil is in you, if evil is in your heart, that is what is going to be um brought forth so i wanted to to, to share that with you because I, I i shared this a previous on a previous teaching i have absolutely no uh remembrance of which one it was but i know that um i did share it and so nurturing again means to develop it means to uh nourish it means to care for it means to discipline to feed to educate uh, to provide food for, to instruct, to train. It means uh, to rear, which is part of his uh, provision. Um, it means livelihood, uh, training. I'm trying to think sustenance, the, giving you all the necessities that you need to aid. And he said the Ruach to be our aid, to be our comforter, to help us. The Ruach is what nourishes us, the comforter, to keep us, to refresh us, to support us to preserve us okay so that we can continue to be the salt of the earth these are all the things that i'm just thinking of when i think of um nourish and to nurture hallelujah and so why must we be holy why must we be holy well i want to speak for a moment about um, how to restore a dying plant. Now, I'm like, okay, why am I doing this? But this is how the rock led me. So I said, I'm not going to question. <laughs> so we think about the Father Yah saying that I will nurture you to bring you to completion, to bring you to wholeness, um, to sustain you. Um, and what was brought to my attention and what the Ruach wanted me to present was how to restore a dying plant. Because if he is nurturing us, he's trying to bring us to a place. And so if a plant is dying, I looked up some things and did a little bit of research on you know, via the rock on how to restore a dying plant. And so the first thing it says was to check the roots. Check the roots. Remember, we just got finished talking about the hay, what's being downloaded. Because whatever is downloaded is going to be stored. That's the pay. It's going to be stored in your heart and your mind. And that whatever is in your heart, the abundance of your heart, the overflow in your heart, that is what's going to come forth. And so sometimes in order to see what's coming forth, you ever try to find like, why is this person acting like this? What's going on? And then sometimes you say, okay, this person still hasn't healed. They still have childhood trauma that they need to heal from me. There's even within our cell, you have to find a root cause. Anytime there's an issue, you just putting a band, if you don't know the root cause of the issue, you just putting a bandaid on it and it's going to continue to keep resurfacing until it is healed. Okay. And so the first thing that um, I learned is how to restore a dying plant is to check the roots, to see what is the condition of the roots. And looking at the condition of the roots, it says, you know, you got to identify if the plant is um, underwater. Okay. It doesn't have enough water because different plants have different needs. You can't water them all the same. Is it getting the light? that you know that it needs it also spoke about um 
trimming off and removing anything that is corrupting. Okay, so if there's um, any dead leaves, um, the article said that you want to trim back the leaves. You want to trim it and cut the leaves off. You want to uh, trim back the stem. And so that made me think of the, the foolish virgins. Um, and, and not just the foolish virgins, but the 10 virgins where we talk, and we've been talking a lot about trimming your wick. We're the lamp. You want to trim your wick because if your wick is not trimmed, it's, it's going to prevent your light from shining and you're not going to be able to um, continue. Your light is going to go out. You're talking about that oil or whatever. And so it says to check the lighting to make sure it's getting enough light. We know Yahusha is the light. And it also talked about repotting it because sometimes you have to repot it if something is dying. And so that talk, brought me back to the wineskins, you know, message and that we've, you know, talked about a couple years ago. You can't put, you should say, you can't put new wine in old wine skin. So sometimes we're trying to go on our journey with the Father Yah, where he's requiring us to be perfect and holy, but we want to continue in our old ways and in our old vessel. And, it, and that's not going to work because the newness is bursting with life and trying to expand and spread. And so Old um an old wine skin does not have the elasticity to stretch and to be able to accommodate the bursting forth of the new life that's in you. So new wine has to be put in a new wine skin. And so that was what was um what was uh shared with me as far as um how to restore um a dying plant. And something that the Ruach has shared with me yesterday in my quiet time is as far as like downloading. And this is just kind of going back to what we were talking about before. When you're, when the Ruach is downloading things to you, um, especially into, and I can speak for myself into my heart and my mind, it's because I spend a lot of time in his presence. Okay. Um, just thinking about Moses because the transformation takes place. Remember in the secret place, remember we learned that and the nourishment, that which is veiled, that which is covered, that container. And um, the rub brought me back to remembrance of Moses when he was on Mount Sinai, he was getting the instructions, the 10 words and instructions for the tabernacle. Okay, he was up on that mountain for 14 days and 40 nights. Okay. And when he came down off that mountain, he had been in the presence of the Father for so long that the glory of Yah sh sh shone so bright on his face that he had to wear a veil. They were afraid of him. And so what the rock was saying to me is that there's no way that you're spending time in his presence, in the secret place, and you're not being affected and you're not being transformed, that you're not being downloaded. It is no way. There's no way. There is no way that if you're spending time in his presence consistently, there is no way that he, that the rock is not downloading anything to you. There's no way that you're not transforming in his presence. There's no way that you're not growing in his presence. There's no way. There's there is absolutely no way. That's 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 a place that's hidden. That is a place that is protected. There's no way that a, a embryo is in the womb of a mother for 9 months and it is not growing unless there is something wrong with the fetus okay there's no way and so i want you to really think about that think about that and try to figure out what is the root cause because if i'm not growing i'm dying i'm lacking where am i lacking what is the root cause what's causing me not to shine as bright what's causing me to not hear from the father? What's causing me to be separated from him? What's causing me 
Why am I not where I should be? What is going on? Why we must be holy? Let me answer this question. Remember Moses and Moses in Exodus 3 and 5, Moses in the burning bush. When he went to draw near to this burning bush, he was born near this bush to see this great sight. This bush that was, was on fire, but it wasn't consumed. And he's thinking, how is this bush burning, but it's not consumed? But when he went to draw near, Moses was told, do not come any closer. He said, don't come any closer. And then he was told to remove the sandals, take the shoes off of your feet for the ground on which you are standing is holy. Now, was the ground itself holy? No. But the presence of the one who was there is holy. That made the ground holy. The ground in and of itself was not holy. It was the presence of the one that was there that made the ground holy. And so wherever his presence dwells becomes holy. Do you get that? Wherever his presence dwells becomes holy. This is something that you have to understand. And I want you to understand where I'm going with this. Because Joshua was told the same thing when he said, I am the commander of Yah's army. And he bowed down, he prostrated himself and worshiped him. And then when brother Stephen testified, he testified of Moses' encounter in the book of Acts. And so what is it that we need to remember about being holy, if the where his presence is becomes holy. At one point, before Yahushua's finished work on the tree, man could not go near to approach our holy Elohim. We could not approach him. Before Yahushua's finished work on the tree, we could not approach a holy Elohim. We could not approach him. But now, now that he has finished and completed the perfect work that he was sent to do to nourish us, he now has ascended back to his father. He sent back the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the redeemer, this beautiful, precious gift to come and dwell within us to live in us, to help us, to lead us, and to teach us all things. And now, because of what was done, we can now come boldly to Yah's throne of grace because of Yahushua. And so again, wherever the presence of Yah is, is holy. Let me say this again. Whatever the presence of Yah is, is holy. Did you get that? Take your shoes off your feet because the ground, the place where you are standing is holy. And so if Yah's set apart spirit his Ruach HaKadosh, his Holy Spirit abides in us. You know where I'm getting ready to go? If his Holy Spirit abides in us, then we too are holy. We must therefore be holy. 
because his set apart, his set apart spirit only dwelled in the tabernacle. It only dwelled in the Holy of Holies. We, they could not approach. They could not come near only the high priest once a year to make atonement for the sins of the people. And he had to have on bells so that he would not get killed. There was a veil in the tabernacle that separated us from him. And so if we are housing the set of our spirit of Yah, then our bodies are now the holy of holy. Did you hear that? Our bodies are now the holy of holy. Again, in the tabernacle, only the high priest could enter into the holiest of holies. And now those who choose to obey and follow Yahusha can receive the free gift of the Holy Spirit to come dwell in them. And to again, and, and, and again, it's only if you choose to cleanse your hands, to purify yourselves, to remove double-mindedness from your heart. Today, let me say this again, being eternally separated from Yah today, the Ruach said, is a choice. Being eternally separated from Yah today is a choice. Are you listening to what I am saying? We could not dare to approach before. Even when Yasharel were Going to be his chosen people, he told Aaron, he told Moses, don't have them come any closer or the animals nothing, lest I burst forth Gihon onto them and they be destroyed. Yah is holy. He is a holy Aliyim. He is too holy for anything unclean to be in his presence. If his Holy Spirit, listen, again, being eternally separated from Yah today, right now, is a choice that man make, that you make. We didn't have that choice before you, you just perfect work was finished. We did not have that choice. If his spirit truly lives in you, your body is the temple of the living Elohim. And therefore, the standard to live holy, to live perfect, stands even more today. That's why when you commit fornication, this is a sin where you're sinning against your own self. The other sins are committed outside the body. But when you are fornicating, you are sinning against your own body, your own self. It is therefore... For this reason, why we cannot do whatever we want to do, we cannot live however we want to live, we cannot do what everyone else is doing, we cannot join with everything and everyone, we can't join with sororities and fraternities. Our bodies are a living sacrifice unto Yah, which automatically means consecration. We blank period. We have been called to holiness as a body of believers, as the members, and listen to what I'm saying, as the members of his body. Let me repeat it again. As the members of his body, as members like you have members of your body, your fingers, your toes, your nose, your neck, your head. We are members of his body and we are one. What you do to yourself if you're a member of the body, you're doing it to him. Do you understand? Will you take that which is holy and join it with a harlot? Again. As a body of believers, we have been called to holiness. We, just as Yahushua, have been called to lay down our life. 
as he did. He died. We have been called to be committed in love, even when we don't even feel like it. Love is not doing something just because you have these emotions. Many people think they love a person, but it's emotions. Love is doing, is being committed and faithful, even when you might not feel like it. Even when you might not feel like it. I want to read something from a sister, a quote, and I got permission. And I'm going to give the link after the sun goes down. I'm not going to put the link to her book. This is a book that everyone should have. It's called Remnant Love by Sister Yara Aruka Shalom. When in the end time days battle to endure in the light of love. This book has been blessing my soul. And this is, and I, we're always, we'll always have us on the same page all the time. And as I was, as he's been preparing this, message in me and downloading this in me it is aligned exactly where i'm at with reading her book and so i'm not gonna i will put the link to her book after the sun goes down i'm not going to put it before because i know some somebody gonna be um hard-headed and try to go purchase the book before the sun go down so i'm gonna wait once the sun go down i'm gonna put the link to um uh, where you can purchase her book and I will strongly advise you because it will truly edify your soul. But I want to read, and I got her permission, and she said yes. So I'm going to read a couple of quotes from her book. She says, um, and again, when when we are again, when when we are being holy, it's about self-sacrifice. It's about being committed and loyal, even when you don't want to. We've been called to self-sacrifice. We've been called to serve one another within the body in humility and in love for bearing one another, okay? And so I wanna read a couple of quotes from her book. It says, Yahushua went into prayer at the Garden of Gethsemane to align, to align his will with the Father's will as his flesh wanted to find a way out of suffering the approaching death. He brought his disciples to pray with him, knowing that they would also be facing a trial in their, of their faith. The disciples grew weary, however, and fell asleep. Messiah warned them to strengthen their spirit because the flesh will rise up and move contrary to the will of Yah. That is what stood, up, stood out to me. That when we're going through trials, we need to make sure that we're strengthened because the flesh will rise up and it will move contrary to the will of Yah. Yahushua, when he went in the Garden of Gethsemane to pray, he wanted to go and pray so that he would align his will with the will of the Father because his flesh wanted to find a way out of suffering, the approaching death. But then he said, not my will, your will. Let me finish reading the quote. It says, therefore, we must strengthen ourselves through prayer, fasting, spending time in Yah's word and his presence to maintain our spiritual sight and strength. This allows us to continue to value his life in us above our ego, desires, and the comfort and the familiarity this world presents to us. We must love the right part of, of our life, his life in us. So the right part of our life is his life in us and hate every thought and inclination that threatens it. And she goes on to say, loving ourselves is about guarding our house against anything within or without that threatens to dismantle it and refusing to allow Yah's flow of light, the flow of light. Remember we talked about that pain, not pain, hey, the flow of light to be downloaded. Let me read this again. Loving ourselves is about guarding our house, guarding our hearts against any, and I'm saying hearts, she's saying house, uh, guarding our house against anything, whether within or without, that threatens to dismantle it and refusing to allow Yah's flow of light and love towards us to be hindered. You're not going to allow it to be hindered. Why? Because our life is hidden in, in him. Our life is hidden in him. 
We're the good thing that's hidden in him and his life is hidden in us. We have, in one of the quotes she says, we have to create a space of safety and protection within our own soul. This is grace. Grace is a protected space. And we have to, and this is a reason why we must be holy. Thank you, Sister Minyan, for this beautiful book. This sister is filled with so much wisdom. I'm so pleased with her and the work that she's doing. And I will put the link to her book. After the sun go down, come back to this video and it will be there, okay? It's worth every penny and then some, okay? Because she is strengthening us in love. In, it's just strengthen us and showing us how to win these end day, end day battles to endure in the light of love and keep that light burning. So thank you, Sister Mignon, for your beautiful sacrifice of this book and this time and the Ruach. And this and, and when you read it, it's clear that the Ruach downloaded every, every dot it'll into her. So thank you, Sister. And so... Again, we have been called to self-sacrifice. We've been called to serve one another within the body and humility uh, for bearing with one another. And so the question that I want to ask you, those of you who are listening, when will you grow up in Yahusha? When will you grow up in Yahusha? When will you mature in Messiah? I want to take you back to when Moses, and, and it's funny how I have three different things with Moses when he was in the presence of Yah, he was veiled Moses with the burning bush, and now Moses. Moses, when he had grown, when he finally had grown to maturity, because he, he it says that he, because he was, he thought he was Pharaoh's grandson, but when Moses had grown to maturity, and realize who he was. He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. But he chose, the scripture says, rather to suffer affliction with the people of Yah. Okay? He was motivated by his faith. Motivated by his faith. Being motivated by his faith. And knowing who he is, Moses left Egypt behind. Our people, Yah was trying to bring them out. And all they kept talking about, oh, when we was in Egypt, we had meeks and onions and we had this and we had flesh. Mumbling and complaining like Sister Prina said in her prayer. And it's Sister Prina, I'll talk to you afterwards, but you was spot on with that prayer, sis, because you did not know what I was talking about. When she was talking about his grace is sufficient, she was, that's how the rock works. I didn't tell her. She didn't know what I was talking about. But being motivated by his faith, Moses left Egypt behind. We have to leave Egypt behind. We don't need to be reminiscing about what we did and how we looked when we were in Egypt. We have left that behind. And so when your faith is truly aroused, not church, Okay, when your faith is truly aroused, you you will refuse for anyone to get your identity mixed up. Moses no longer wanted to be known. He refused, the scripture says, to be called the son of Pharaoh. He wanted to suffer with his people. And so when our faith is truly aroused, we are going to refuse to that anyone, we won't, we won't, we don't want to have anybody even think. Get us mixed up. We don't want to have, get our identification of who we are in Messiah mixed up with those who are in the world because of how we're living, because of how we're speaking, because of what has been downloaded into our heart. Therefore, it is coming forth. Okay? Because when you live a, 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 a life that is holy, that is acceptable and pleasing to Yah, there is no mix-up. There is no mix-up. People know there is no misunderstanding on who it is that you serve when you are truly submitted to the Father and you are truly living for him. People who are not submitted, no, okay? They can see the light in you. They see the spirit that's in you, okay? Sometimes that will scare them because they're trying to figure you out. 
they you can't fool people that's in the world and that's what the like that's why you should say he's going to spit out the lukewarm you he said i wish you were rather cold or cold or cold, or cold, or cold. because you're neither and you look warm i'm gonna spew you out of my mouth you you have to make a choice you, there is you can't blend in you the, the world knows their own okay and if you're if you're not real if your walk is not real Real recognize real. <laughs> they they know people, they know when people play in church. Okay. And so this is a reason why we must be holy. This is a reason why we, we must be holy. I spent a lot of time on this. I spent a little bit more, but that's okay. That's okay. Because I'm being led by the Ruach. And so I want to read Matthew chapter 23, um, verse uh 37. Yahushua is speaking. He says, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. He said, you killed the prophets. And you know our people did. He said, you killed the prophets. You stoned to death those that Yah has sent to you. Many, many times, he said, I wanted to help your people. I wanted to gather them together as a hen gathers her chick under her wings. He says, but you did not let me. You 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 didn't let me. I, as as a as a hen gathers chicks, her chicks under her wings. He said, "I wanted to gather you." He said, "But you wouldn't let me." That means, as a hen gathers their chick to cover them, he says, "You refuse to be covered." You were unwilling. When it says you did not let me, I'm 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 trying to nurture you, but you're unwilling. You don't want me to nurture you. You ever heard of that saying? You try to help someone, and you try and you're doing everything in your power to help them to be successful, to get them on the right track, and they just don't want to do right. And sometimes you have to. Sometimes you have to let go. That doesn't mean you don't love them. But are you going to go down with a sinking ship? Are you going? If they want to be the Titanic. Are you going to keep playing the music or jump off? At some point, you're going to have to take this. They had the 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 uh, the uh the boats or whatever. They had blew up or whatever. They let, are you going to get on that? Or are you going to just say, well, I'm going down with the ship and play the, and listen to the music play? Some That's saying some people just can't be helped. That saying is true because you have to want to. He says, I've many times, I keep sending people, you killing all of my prophets. Many times I'm, I'm trying to gather you. I'm trying, I'm trying to help you. He said, but you didn't let me. You didn't let me. You refuse to be covered. There are many of you listening to the sound of my voice right now. The father Yah has been trying over and over. He's been sending people to you, talking to you about repenting, talking to you about reconnecting, developing your relationship. You, and you refuse well, I'm not ready yet. Well, I, I'll do it later. Like, like you know if you're going to be here later on. The Father wants to nurture you. But many of you will not allow it. You won't allow it. You have to allow it. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You have to allow it. And so as I was preparing this message and what I just shared with you, that scripture, this was after you see this picture, but I just put that in that order because that's how I wanted it. But as I was in the kitchen yesterday, the Ruach to bring forth this message of nourish, the Ruach placed this vision of a hen sitting on eggs. So I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to use this. And it's interesting that that scripture that we just got finished reading that I just found that like that was like at the last one of the last things that I put in this message. So this was way before that. But it's interesting that it says as a hen gathers um, her chicks under her wings, he says, but you refuse to be covered. You are unwilling to be gathered. If you're trying to gather and they running off and they don't, you know, unruly and they don't, that's how like you want to wander off. He said, I'm trying to gather you and you want to still keep wandering. Okay. 
And so this was the picture that the Ruach told me to use, okay? And so I have a shocking revelation um, that I'm going to present. Please stay because we're going to um, have a little bit of praise, a beautiful praise that we're going to do. And um, I, this revelation has to do with who he revealed himself to be to Abram. And so we know that um, I want to revisit the story of Abraham and Sarah. I want to revisit the story of Abraham and Sarah. So just long story short, Yah promised Abram that he would have a son, a son of promise, and that through this son of promise that he will have descendants as innumerable as the stars. And so Abram and Sarai's, uh, they got weary. They got weary. Their faith began to be tested. They were weary of waiting. And, you know, I can resonate with that when Yah promises you something and sometimes you've been waiting for a long time. And, and so Abraham and Sarah, they, they, their faith began to be tested. They they got weary. And the reason why I say that they got weary and people, well, it didn't say he got weary. Okay, read in between the line. What did the father Yah tell Abraham that he was going to do? The reason why I say that their faith began to wane a little is because they decided to take matters into their own hand. Y'all did not tell uh, Abram to go into Hagar, okay? Uh, Abram, Abram and Sarai, they were both up in age. Um, Abraham, I believe he was 86 when Ishmael was born. Ishmael was not the son of promise. Sarai was barren. She could not have children. And uh, he made a promise that he will have a son. And they got tired of waiting. So now he's like, well, I'm, you know, we're in a ripe age of, you know, 86. We're like near 90. Like it still hasn't happened. And so his wife, Sarai, tells Abram to impregnate their slave girl, Hagar. Okay, and a Abram didn't say no, he agreed. Okay, if he didn't say, well, let's wait on Yah, he said, and he did it, he agreed, and he did so. He went into her, and so once Hagar got pregnant, Sarah's hatred towards her grew, and then it, she was harsh towards her, and eventually Hagar fled, but Yah told her to return because he, you know, he tells you that, you know, obey your masters, your earthly masters, that this is pleasing to the father. You serve your earthly masters as if you're serving him. So that's something that we need to keep in mind as we are working on our jobs. But Hagar, you know, uh, was told to return. And Yah said he was going to bless her. Okay. And Hagar called Yah and almighty one and all and al strong authority and almighty one a vision meaning a one who sees one who watches one who understands and knows what i'm going through and that was in genesis 16 and so when we arrive at genesis 17 and 1 yah reveals himself to abram at the ripe age and i say ripe <laughs> at the ripe age of 99 as all should die okay as all should die and then he was told to walk perfectly so let's read it genesis 17 and 1 and when abram was 99 years old yah appeared to abram and said to him i am all should die walk before me and be perfect okay be perfect he was told to be perfect. And then his name shortly after was changed from Abram to Abraham and Sarai's name was changed from Sarai to Sarah. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment. 
So all should die is translated Yah Almighty. But let me tell you how good the Father is and how good the Ruach is. And so when I dug a little deeper, the Ruach helped me to see a beautiful, beautiful treasure. Okay. All Shaddai is translated Yah Almighty. A-L is the Aleph and the Lamed. It is the strong authority. Yah Almighty. Okay. Some people say God Almighty, but it's Yah Almighty. Okay. Alahim Almighty. And so it's translated Yah Almighty, but mighty in what? Brace yourselves for what you're getting ready to see, okay? Because there's so much more to what I thought. The beauty of Yah, well, let me just say this. When you think of Almighty, what are some words that come to mind? When I think of Almighty, I think of power, I think of strength, like, you know, someone who's very strong, maybe somebody who lift weights, body build, muscular, you know, someone who's like, what's his name? The Rock. You think about just somebody's powerful, maybe uh, Samson, you know, very strong. You think about that David. But y'all almighty, all should die. All should die. What the rock had me focusing on is Shad. Okay. Shad. Shad means breast. Shad means breast. Okay. So it's connected to the tender care of Yah the Father to nourish us, to satisfy us, and to provide for us. And so when you think of Yah Almighty, no one thinks of breasts. No one thinks of a mother who is nurturing, who is caring for, who is feeding and satisfying the baby and providing for the baby. Giving the baby everything that he needs. Yah is he, he is the one who abundantly is sufficient enough to supply all we need. His grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. Yah is all plentiful. He is all sustaining. He is all supplying to those who are under his care. He introduced himself as all Shaddai to Abraham. Shad means breast. It means breast. Shad is used 24 times in the Bible. Shada is used 48 times. Shad means breast. So look, we'll look over here. The ancient Hebrew lexicon of the Bible <laughs> for Shad is breast. It's breast. Shad is breast. And when I looked this up, Blue Letter Bible led me to this as well. It's Shad. It's spelled, it's spelled Shin Dalit. It says the pictograph Shin is a picture of two front teeth and the delect is a picture of a tent door that dangles down. Combine these two mean two that dangle. So you think about the breasts, the hang, that dangle. Let 
Look at this. Shaddai. Shaddai. Rest. Almighty. Hallelujah. Give y'all some praise wherever you are. Almighty. Shad. Our almighty one. Breast. When you think about the function of the breast to supply the need. Those of you who are mothers who breastfeed your, your babies, you know. You are supplying. They, they will cry when they need that. They're letting you know what they need and you give them what they need. You're nourishing them until they're satisfied. You're providing for them. I had, when I was pregnant, I had so much milk. It was sufficient enough. But it means breast. Hallelujah. Yah is more than enough for us. Hallelujah. He is all powerful. He is able to nurture us and to supply us and to generously sustain us. Shad. Hallelujah. The beauty of Yah Almighty. All Shaddai is the power that he has alone to go beyond the unthinkable, the unimaginable. His grace, as Prentice prayed, is sufficient. Abram was called in Genesis 17 and 1 to walk perfectly, meaning to walk blamelessly, to walk wholeheartedly, and completely, faithfully before me. Yah told me, I will nurture you and bring you, and now I know it to be, to what he was going to bring me to his wholeness and to completion and to perfection. Our faith is consistent with our walk. It is consistent with our walk. It is consistent. Yeah, our almighty one, our power supplies. He satisfies us. He fills us. He nourishes us as a mother does to her child. Breast Almighty, you see it? Something else that I want to show you that the Ruach had me zero in, and I know it was a Ruach because I would have never seen it. I want you to pay attention. Still at Shaddai. Sarah's name and Abram. Pay attention to their names. Look here. Sarah's name is spelled the same way. Look at it. Shin Dalit Yod Shaddai. That's the spelling of Sarah's name. Shin Dalit Yod. Look at it. The same thing. I, I said, get out of here. Why is it in her? You know, this is her spelling because the woman can hold, have the breasts that dangle, that nourishes, that supplies, that sustains, that satisfies. Hallelujah. That provides that tender, loving care. The spirit of gentleness. Hallelujah. Breast, Sarai, Shaddai, Shin, Dalet, Yod, Breast, Almighty, Al Shaddai, Shad, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Something else that was I noticed when their name changed from Sarai to Sarah, from Abram 
to Abraham. Sarah, now it changes to the Hebrew letter hey. Okay. The Hebrew letter hey signifies the grace that the father Yah was given to her by opening her womb because she was barren. Sarai and Sarah means princess. But the latter letter, the Hebrew letter hey that is added, behold, pay attention to, it signifies her being a mother of fruitfulness to the nations. Abraham, he's a um he was Abram was known as the exalted father, but Abraham now is a father of the multitude. The multitude that came from that coat of many colors that we talked about. Remember the veil had the same colors as the coat? Hallelujah. As the coat. So look, look at this. Hallelujah. And so before I bring my sis in, I, we're going to have just spend about 13, 14 minutes just thanking the Father, taking in what the Father has revealed. And I said what the Father has revealed, not me, because he just downloaded it to me and I'm just giving it to you. I want us to meditate on what you have learned today. I want you to, as you listen to this beautiful worship because we're gonna we're gonna do some worship in a minute just and 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 when i say worship that means if you feel led to prostrate yourself to bow down to get on your knees lift up your hands and i just just put this picture back up on the screen this is the father yeah covering us gathering us let us not be like those that Yahushua said he tried to gather, but didn't allow him to gather, to, to nurture them. He's covering us. And so we're going to have my own version of us soaking in his presence. We're going to just spend the next 14, 13, 14 minutes soaking in his presence. And then I'm going to come back with my final message. And then I'm going to bring my sis in. So please stay with us. Um, we're going to praise Yah, our nurturer. Al Shaddai. And then we'll come back. Oh, just hold your hands up and welcome him in this place. Welcome him in your place. Hold your hands up and welcome your father in. Let him come in, let him come in, let him come in. He's our father. Holy father. Oh, he's our father. We cast out pain of the past. You're delivered from depression, peace over pain. We cast out pain from the past. You're delivered from depression, peace instead of pain.
Your radiance comes from Him. He gives you beauty for ashes. Your radiance comes from Him. Arise and shine. Come forth. Let nothing hold you back. Nothing from your past. He gave you beauty for ashes. Your radiance comes from within, it comes from Him. Shine forth. Let nothing weigh you down, let nothing weigh you down. There's the open door, walk through it. Take nothing for your journey, let nothing weigh you down. <laughs> There's the open door, walk through it. Take nothing for your journey, let nothing weigh you down. There's the open door, walk through it. Take nothing for your journey, let nothing weigh you down. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 the Father says, when I look at you, I'm pleased. The Father says, when I look at you, I see me. When I look at you, I'm pleased. When I look at you, I see me. Like father, like daughter, hey. Like father, like son, I see me. Like father, like daughter, like father, like son, I see me. Keep holding on, I've made you strong. Oh, you look like me. Keep holding on, I've built you strong. You look like me, holy, righteous. You look like me, for I am pleased. Beauty for ashes. I give you beauty for all of the ashes. No more. beauty for all of those ashes no more oh no more only beauty you look like me says the father you look like me it's only by your grace only by your mercy, only cause your father, you look after me. It's only by your grace, only by your mercy. It's only cause your father and you've always looked after me. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave, he gave, he gave, he gave, he gave. For God so loved the world, he gave. He gave, he gave so you could live. So we could
Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for exchanging and giving us beauty for our ashes, giving us beauty for everything. You've redeemed everything. You're redeeming everything. You're rebuilding the ruined walls. Hey, you're redeeming everything. You're rebuilding the ruined walls. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That we don't have to look back there anymore. We don't have to look back there anymore. We are free. We are covered. We are redeemed. Oh. We are redeemed. We are redeemed. We are Ooh, hallelujah. I'm sitting up here just crying. I'm just so thankful. I'm grateful for so many things, despite it all. The Father Yah has been nurturing me, and I just just want to just thank everyone who has who has made us sacrifice to make sure that I'm taken care of. Yeah, truly is our nurturer. And he said he would never leave me. And I'm just grateful that he poured this into me and told me that he would nurture me because he know how I've been feeling lately. The Father, yeah. He has created everything, everything with a purpose. And um, he most definitely created man with a purpose. There's nothing that he has created without a purpose. Everything that he has created with it has a purpose. And man's purpose is to do his will. It is to fear him and it's to keep his commandments. When you read Jeremiah 2 and 11, the father of Yah told Jeremiah, he says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says Yah. I have thoughts of peace and not of evil and to give you an expected end Yah has a plan. I know the plans he told Jeremiah that I have for you to give you a future and hope. He had a plan for each and every one of you who are listening to my voice when he created you. Don't believe that you have no plan because he created you with a plan in mind. He says, for all, all who have a need, come to me. All who have a need, come to the one who has all the answers. Come to the one who can supply and to fulfill all of your needs. Come. When it comes to our children, and I was led to say this. When it comes to our children, Yah is already 
He's already prepared them for success. He is prepared for your children because he had a plan. He's prepared for their success. He is prepared for them to succeed because he knows them. He knew them. The scripture says it. He knew them before they were born. The Father, I had me meditating on Psalms 139 when David said, I was fearfully and wonderfully made. The Father, Yah told Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, he says, I knew you. Before you were born, Yah told Jeremiah, I set you apart and I appointed you as a prophet to the nations before he was born. He already had a plan. Before he was even formed in the womb, before he even, before his parents got together, had intercourse. Because it says, before I formed you in the womb, he wasn't even in the womb. And Yah already had thoughts towards him, thoughts of peace. He had a purpose. He had a, a plan. The prophet Isaiah said that he was caught from the womb. Zechariah and Elizabeth were told by an angel that they would bear a son. We know him to be John the Baptist. And the angel told Zechariah that he would be great in the sight of Yah because he would be filled with the Holy Spirit. Even before he was born, he would be filled with the Spirit and that he would bring many of the sons of Yasharel back to their God, back to their Elohim. He prepared the way for Yahushua, preaching the good news, crying aloud, sparing not. He had a purpose. He had a plan. And so what I want to say, our children, because it saddens me. And Prina is sharing something that she, you know, one of the students told her, but it saddens me to see the condition of our children. Children are an inheritance of Yah. They are a gift. And they have a purpose. They have a reason why Yah has brought them forth into the earth. And as parents, we have been charged with this great responsibility to train them up in the will of the Father and then to influence them to fulfill the will of the Father, not our own. So often, I was talking to my brother yesterday that Sometimes the parents are pushing their children to become what they want them to become and to do what they want. But that is not your job. Your job is to influence them to fulfill the will of Yah. They're not here for our own pleasure to do as we please. And we're and why they're here, why we have them this precious gift in our in our care because so many of our women in scripture were barren and could not have children. It was a joy. And to see so many of our women going to the clinic, going to the abortion clinic, we are to treat them with compassion. We are to treat them with love. Y'all cares how you treat children because how you treat them. Remember what we learned about pay. They store it. The words that you speak, they store it. And then that's what comes out. What has been downloaded? Hey, what breath, what words, what spirit has entered in? It's stored and then, and then it comes out. We're to treat them with love and compassion. And just because they're little does not mean that as parents, we get to treat them any kind of way. We're to discipline them and to rear them up in the fear of Yah. That is our job. We are to communicate the will of Yah to our children so that they will know him and that they will fear him. I can't remember the scripture right now, but there is a scripture that says that. That you to teach the next generation so that they will know me, so that they will fear me. Because we don't, we see what is happening to our children today. Our children don't want to be gathered. They're unwilling to be covered. And so we see so many young children dying. I saw a boy on the news, a 17-year-old, his name was Elijah. You know he had purpose if his name was Elijah. Killed, walking home from school. Purpose gone. 
Again, children are not for our own selfish ambitions, but they have been granted to us during this space of time to carry out the will of the Father Yah. And so what I want you to do as parents to pray, pray that you fulfill the will of Yah in your children. Pray that you fulfill the will of Yah in your children and then influence them in that direction that the Father is leading you. I prayed that I was up because I really didn't even get any sleep. I was up praying and singing songs. And I was praying this for my own son and praying, Father Yah, help me, teach me, reveal to me your will so that I can fulfill the will of my son so I can influence him in that direction. Place your desires in his heart Place it in my heart so that we can be in alignment with you. Pray to the Father also to help you. Father, yeah, I pray, help, help me to fulfill your will in this earth. What was I here for? You created me with a purpose. What is my purpose? Fulfill your will in me. Influence me. Pray for his assistance. Pray for the Holy Spirit. Pray that he will nurture you and supply you with all you need. That you might be brought to full completion. That you might be brought to perfection. And you might be brought to wholeness. That's what he said. The Lord that God will nurture thee. I will nurture thee to bring you to completion, to wholeness. Pray this. Raise your children with joy. Not bitterness and anger and strife and fighting and warfare and discord. Because they're going to store it. And that's what you're going to see come out. When we fulfill his will, there is satisfaction. There is satisfaction. And so the last thing I want to show is a, a revelation that the father gave me last night. We're looking at the breastplate. Remember the breastplate of the priests. The high priest bears the people just as the woman bears children and nurses them, bears them on her breast. The breast, Shad, Almighty, Shad, the breasts that dangle and hang. The breastplate dangles and hangs. And this is where the, the, the child would lay. The stones represent the 12 tribes of Yasharel, the precious, valuable stones that Yah cherishes. He values. Hallelujah. That's why it's called the breastplate. El Shaddad, breast. The two that dangle and hang, the breastplate that the high priest wears, that bears the people. Yahushua is our high priest. He bore us. He bore our sins, our transgressions. He died for the iniquity and the sins of our people. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. The father Yah told me a few years ago he was born in a manger because he was born for the sole purpose of dying to nourish you. Hallelujah. This is the reason why the priest bears them. Hallelujah. Shaddad, breast. That's why it's called breastplate. Children are a treasure to Yah, just as these stones that the high priest will wear are a treasure. And he wears them at all times, bearing them. Yah is our nurturer. He's our nurturer. Because all provision is in him. No one can provide 
or supply all of our needs or love us like Yah. So my message today, before I call my sis in, is to allow Yah the Father to nurture you. And that's my message for today. So you can come on in, sis. Hallelujah. What a, a beautiful message, lesson. I'm telling you, I've been in tears. I've been <laughs> just, uh, just the goodness of Yah is just so uplifting. You know, especially when sometimes you don't value yourself and you question yourself when Yah says and that beautiful praise I brought you for, for beauty I, tr oh, I traded or I brought you for beauty for, for ash hallelujah so I, I I mean this was just so overjoying, so sobering and um such a blessing and a treat. I'm telling you, you you were right when you said we were gonna be in for a just a special treat today. Um I don't even know where to begin, <laughs> sis, but <laughs> yeah, I know. But I'm telling you, just going, um, just starting out with uh, the words that Yah spoke to you as you was coming out of your sleep on Thursday, it's just resonated throughout this whole lesson. And even yesterday when I was in prayer, I, I kept hearing that his 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 nurturing or his basically what he provides his his provision is sufficient. Yeah, that's been the thing. Cause I think Stephanie was saying the same thing that he was telling her this week that his my grace is sufficient. And um, the grace has been all week, like Pasco week, grace and peace. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and that's been just like resonating, you know, and, and what came to mind when I was praying last, it was the children that our brothers and sisters that mumbled and grumbled. I, I pray like, let me not. Yes. Because sometimes we can, we can feel like we don't have enough. Right. Yes. But Yah says that my provision is sufficient. And as yes. long as you continue to just be gracious and have gratitude and, and not put that loud at complaining thought, casting that imagination down. Right. then you will truly treasure what Yah is doing in your life. Yes. And we we have to remember too that we have to go through trials and tribulations to get through it. It trial, yeah. you know, to to so that Yah can refine us. Right. And so um we may not always understand we may not all like what we're going through. We may feel like, oh, we, you know, you know, the love that we have for y'all, we should have more. But we have to remember that Yah knows what we need in our season and that he's going to give us what we need. And the only thing that we need to is to continue to keep our heart postures right towards him. <laughs> But I'm telling you, I love how you started out with the word study on Nutra. 
And just those earthly examples, like a mother nurturing her infants, cultivating a garden, a father nurturing his son, you know, if he was injured. And then I thought about how we as teachers, we nurture our students. Yeah, we do nurture them. We do. We, we give. We do a lot of nurturing. Yes, <laughs> we absolutely. Oh, we can we even get started them. with the teaching. We hugging them and giving yes. them surprises. We and greeting them at the door. So that is nurturing. You're right. And we're feeding them because I've always said you have snacks and yes. we, we are nurturing them. We tell them we love them and care yes. for them. They're spending more time with us a lot of times than they do with their parents. So you're right. We do. We are absolutely. nurturing uh, our students. Yes. Yeah, because we sometimes are the parents, the father, the 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 the, the mediator, right? <laughs> all in all, Refer but the I, referee. Yes, before the doctor, I, the nurse, absolutely sick, everything. Yes, so we do new um um nurture, nurture, yeah. nurture, and then I you know the Psalm seventy eight. That's where uh you were saying for the next generation yes read do you have it 78 yes i'm gonna read it dear sis is it starts at verse five and then it goes to verse eight it says for he issued his laws to Jacob. he gave his instruction to yasharel he commanded our ancestors to teach them to their children so that the next generation might know them even the the child not yet born and they, in turn, will teach their own children. So each generation should set up its hope anew on Yah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Getting his glory, miracles, and obeying his commands. And then in verse 8, then they will not be like their ancestors, stubborn, rebellious, and unfaithful, refusing to give their hearts to Yah. That sounds like refusing, just like what I was reading. Yes. Um, Matthew 20, refusing to be gathered, yes. refusing. <laughs> they were unwilling yes. to be covered. Yes, that fit perfectly right there. But just going over those synonyms of, you know, of what nurture means, uh, cultivate, foster, cherish, nourish, nourish, and that just stood out because when you did pay, I mean, um, head pay, tech, Lamed and just broke it down. I'm telling you, I was just in awe of just like, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes when you think you know some word, you know, the mm -hmm. the, the meaning, and then y'all just keep revealing and keep yes, yes. and just, you know, um, so um, you know, just going over those words and how y'all is leading you to keep you complete, you know, to show us that he is the one that's completing us not we we can't complete ourselves no. and he's the one that's covering us and providing and sustaining us and i just love how you just went over those definitions and then just going into well really the spelling of of hey pay and then yeah. you know you talked about the 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 um the spoken word that is stored within our hearts that we um that is breathed out of our mouth goes up and then the downloading that spoken word that we receive in, it goes down and download mm -hmm. into our mind, you know? And I was just like in awe of just that in itself because it is so true. Whatever is in the hearts, that's what we speak. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Whatever's in there, that's what you speak. That's what you do. It's only you know? downloaded, yes. And so if we don't guard our hearts as you um gave those precepts in um proverbs 4 and 23 and then you know with with diligence and because out of it flows the life <laughs> the life issues you know and so i was just in awe and just all of of just learning hay and pay and how you know and it's so true like because in the tongue you give power in life and you could destroy someone or you can uplift someone, you know? And so this was, I, that was just, I, I'm telling you, I, I was just in awe of just that. And then just going into, you know, um, what, you know, why we must be holy. I was just, just, and that was just awing too, because like when you first did, uh, how must 
you know, we restore a dying plant. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> you know, you know <laughs> like the roots, you know. <laughs> Right. What is the condition of the roots? And, you know, and just mirroring, just thinking and reflecting on that, you know, when you go through uh, a trauma and you don't know, sometimes we, the trauma is so deeply rooted that right. we don't know how to check that root. Right. And that's, you know, when that someone is help, you know, like if you go to a psychiatrist or whatever, you know, and and that's the first thing they do. What are they gonna do? Check the root. They gonna right. They go back to your childhood. Childhood. Most right. of it start there anyway. Right. Absolutely. And then you're gonna trim them prunes. They're gonna give you activities, right? To, mm -hmm. to to trim those limbs or stems. And then, you know, um checking the lighting and see if, if that source, do you got too much sunlight, not enough sunlight, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's when we don't get enough sun, you know, with the vitamin D, you know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, and then um, check the potting. And I, that, when you said check the potting, that, that new wine skin and new uh, wine and, and the new wine skin, that, that resonated because that was a powerful um, message that you did. Um, I think it was almost a year ago. Mm -hmm. But just going mm -hmm. in, when you just, you know, fast forward when you uh, talked about uh, Moses and how, you know, uh, and this is what really stood out, like that burning bush, you know, knowing that when, you know, that knowing that the ground, when Yah, t t uh, well, the messenger of Yah, Yahusha, told him to take his sandals off because he's standing on holy ground, you know, and how you you know presented it. it was like that ground wasn't holy but the presence mm -hmm. that there is what made, made it holy it. yes you know just just you know resonating on that so wherever Yah's presence is there is holiness and 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 we can't as believers you know and saying that we profess and we proclaim we confess and proclaim to to those around us or you know um right we say we live a life that is holy we have to mirror that because our bodies you know are holy because that's where the where the set apart spirit dwells and so just going through that i i was just you know just um that was so on and just um uh, um you mentioning um sister yara her her book is yeah it is it, it's it's like you you know it's really helping to heal the heart yes yes to yes. You to recognize things about yourself that's in your heart yes yeah. well. and 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 also is guiding you to love yah even more that intimacy that you may long uh, to be with, you know, with Yah. And then, sis, okay, when you got to Sarah and Abraham. Well, <laughs> I know. I was like, I was, okay. yes. And then El Shaddai, El Shaddai, that scripture, Yah Almighty. And then when you put up their name, and when you saw those, uh, he he, uh, you know those uh, Hebrew letters, how it mirrored the same thing in Sarah's name. Yes, breast. You, I mean, it, and it just clicked like a mother breast nurse, nourish, nourish an infant. So you know that is what Yah does for us. We are His. That's why He calls us His children. Yes. 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 Then the breastplate. <laughs> yes. And contrast, you know, how the priest wore the breastplate and it dangles in between and um it hangs between their breasts. You know, it's just like this was just so sobering and that worship. I'm telling you. That worship. Yes. Is just so beautiful. Um 
I you this is very this was very a sobering sobering lesson and you know um when we I'm, I'm I know I'm going off but um when we were talking yesterday and I told you about my student one of my students yeah. class that I was in and this is why it's very important that we train up our children and we nourish them because they can go off. And so I'm going to give you a little backdrop about the, the student, the, that what we're doing in our class. So um, in our class, they're writing a personal narrative. And so during a writing workshop, you know, I go around and I was, you know, counseling, conferencing with students and I was asking them, you know, um, about what they're writing and what craft move they're using to bring their uh, story to life. So a craft move could be symbolism or um, dialogue, show or don't tell imagery. Okay, so I'm, this is what I'm looking for in their writing. So before I can even look in this student writing, I, when he uttered these words, I, I had to walk away. But I, because he said, I, so I asked the student, I said, so what is your story? He said, well, because he was hesitant to share it with me at first. He was like, well, you know, I've been thinking about writing this story a long time ago in elementary, but I knew it wasn't, it wasn't appropriate in elementary. But the story I'm writing is about Satan's son and how Satan's son is trying to uh, cross over into two dimensions. He's trying to figure out his you know how he's gonna fit in 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 the world as well as the spiritual realm mm -hmm. I, I just like i, was I so can't crazy. believe it yeah i was so because i mean he just i mean he was like yeah i've been like you can i can't help you with that but uh, i'll sit <laughs> <you. laughs> sorry uh, well, let me look at the time because i'm showing sure nobody right. with that okay okay <laughs> it's time for right and so I mean, they're writing so many dark stories and so much witchcraft and, you know. They're bringing that, their witchcraft into the school. Be careful, parents. That, That's what I want to say. Be careful what you need to find out, what your kids are doing, what they're doing at playtime, what are they doing for activities, what, how, what are they doing for quiet time and rest time, because I'm telling you, they're bringing yoga into the gym now. You need to know if they're doing yoga in gym. If they're yeah. doing calm classroom, they're bringing hypnotism because that's what calm classroom is, hypnotizing them. Um, you need to find out if they're uh if if they're like it's just so much the the books that they have in there teaching yes. them all kinds of things. You need to know what's going on because it's really almost time to pull our children out of this Babylonian yes. system. Yes. Be honest. But yeah. Yeah. I wanna leave out with uh psalms 145 mm -hmm. and then so i this i read this a couple of days it's been resonating mm -hmm. i will exalt you my yah and king i will bless your name forever and ever every day i will bless you and i will praise your name forever and ever great is yah and greatly to be praised his greatness is unsearchable. One generation will commend you, commend your works to the next and will proclaim your mighty acts, the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wondrous works. They will proclaim the power of your awesome deeds and I will declare your greatness. They will extol the fame of your abundant goodness and sing joyful, uh, and sing joyfully of your righteousness. Yah is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, loving devotion. Yah is good to, to all. His compassion rests on all he has made and all you have made and all you have made will give, thank, give you thanks, O Yah, and your saints will be blessed. They will tell of your glory of your kingdom and speak of your might to make known to men your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. 
Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generation. Yah is faithful in all his words and kind in all his actions. Yah upholds all who fall and, and lifts up all who bows down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in season. You open your hands and satisfy the desire of, the, of every living thing. Yah is righteous in all his ways and kind in all his deeds. Yah is near to all who call on him and all who call out to him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. Yah preserves all who loves him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will declare the praise of Yah. Let every creature bless his holy name forever and ever. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know what? Yeah. Since, what is what chapter is that? Because I think I've been I, he had me reading that too this week. I've Psalm read that like, 45. I've been I've been reading that in Psalms 103 and Psalms 104. Yeah, too. Psalms 103 is my he, favorite. Favorite. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. yes. I've been reading both of those. And yes. Yes. so hallelujah. Thank you for hallelujah. that beautiful, beautiful word. So we want to thank you so much. I pray that this message will bless you. I'm, I, 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 if it didn't bless you, I don't know what's going on. Check your roots because I'm telling you, <laughs> it blessed me. And I pray that it bless you. Please leave your comments below. Like and subscribe and share this message. Please share this beautiful message with all that you know. May Yah bless and keep thee. May he make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May he lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. In Yahushua's name, so be it. Enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. Shabbat Shalom, y'all. Wow.
for giving us your set apart thing, your son, Yahusha Mashiach, as the ultimate sacrifice, the unblemished man who took on our sins willingly, laid down his life for us, your peoples, and for always making a way of escape and providing all of our needs. Hallelujah. Yeah, greatly too. 